In this episode of the show, I want to show you how you can very quickly tighten up the timing of your MIDI tracks. That's coming up on Home Music Studio One. All right. Hey, guys, Dave Maxey here. Welcome back to the show. This is the place where you can learn to produce professional quality home music studio recordings, and you can do that even on a limited budget. Don't forget, you can also find me online at homemusicstudio1.com. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive on into what I want to show you in this quick tip. So I'm recording a new track here. This is a new project that I'm working on. And right now I've just got a scratch vocal track that I've recorded with a piano that's done by MIDI. I triggered this from the Addictive Keys plugin uh, using my MIDI controller. So MIDI out from my controller uh, into uh, this VSTi here through my audio interface. And then I've just got a click track to help me kind of keep the timing of uh, this project. So go ahead and let's listen to the intro of this. I want to pay attention to the timing that the click is establishing in listening to how close the intro of this piano track sounds. Let's listen. So not a bad track, but when I when I played this track and I listened to the click as I was recording it, uh, it seemed like I was a little bit tighter to the click. Now, some of this has to do with just certain amount of latency that's involved uh, when I play this track. And then some of it is just, uh, you know, I'm not exactly perfect to the timing of the song. So here's what I don't want to do. I don't want to completely eliminate the human feel and the human elements of the way that I played this track. But what I do want to do is I want to tighten up the timing according to the measure. And so uh, what I'm going to do is use a feature called quantize. Now I'm going to show you how to quantize MIDI in Reaper, but this is something that will work in virtually any DAW. This functionality of quantizing is very similar uh, to regardless of the DAW that you're using. So in MIDI, this track right here is MIDI data. Okay. You can see this is a wave right up here. This is where I recorded the vocal. Uh, the click track is also MIDI data and you can see they look a little bit different. What I'm going to do to access the MIDI data is just simply double click in this area. And now what we're looking at here uh, is the uh, the recorded MIDI data, all right? This is the editor view right here for MIDI. Uh, and what you can see if we kind of look at the beginning of the track, we've got the notes right here, okay? I've got this kind of virtual piano up here. So these are showing the actual notes that I played and their lengths. Uh, as well as the velocity is being shown down here, okay? And you can see if kind of I zoom out, uh, if all of these velocity markers were relatively the same, this would feel very, very uh, mechanical. It would be very, very computerized, if you will. But we've got a lot of good dynamic with how I played this track. That's great. I definitely want the velocity in there. And I really am happy with that. I don't want to change that. But if we zoom in, you can see that the start of a lot of these notes are not exactly on the beginning of the measure. And that's what I want to try and correct. But I want this to sound very natural, okay? So we're going to use the feature of quantization in order to do that. Now, sometimes, you know, the, the word quantize can be a little bit confusing if you've not used it before. Really, all quantize means is just the ability to force our data to be within the confines of a certain amount of multiples. And what that means is in this grid right here, you see these lines, uh, each of these signify a measure, okay? Measure one, measure two, measure three. Within this grid, I've actually got it divided up into 16th notes. So uh, we could go 30 seconds on into 64s, even 128th notes if we wanted to. I'm not playing anything faster than a 16th note. So this is actually exactly what I need. But quantization allows us to kind of force our data to land exactly where we want, in this case, at the start of every uh, nearest 16th note, okay? This is how we're gonna use it. So first thing I'm gonna do is just select this first note. That highlights that. And then I'm gonna do Control A. Uh, if you're on a Mac, I believe that's gonna be Command uh, A. And that what that did is that highlighted all of my notes right here. So I've got every uh, MIDI data, including the vol velocity highlighted. I'm simply gonna go up to the Edit menu. And under this second option of Quantize here, I'm gonna use Quantize Position 
to grid. Now we've got a lot of different options when it comes to quant size. If I click on this here, uh, you can see that we've got the use grid option. We've got all notes. We've got position. We've got strength. We've got several different things that we could adjust, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm not going to use that option there. Uh, I just really want to measure. Uh, I really want to correct the very beginning of the note, just the position to the nearest 16th note. Okay. I don't want to change the velocity. I don't want to change uh, how I play these notes, but I just want their start points to be fixed and kind of cleaned up a little bit. So I'm going to select the quantize position to grid option. When I select that, you'll see now that all of my notation and all of my MIDI data shifts over to the nearest 16th note. All right. So now uh, if I close this out, go back to the beginning of our project and listen to how this kind of cleaned up the timing of our track. There you have it. Really simple, guys. Uh, super duper easy way to kind of tighten up the timing, but yet still maintain the human feel of your MIDI data. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. I'd love to hear about some of the results you're getting. You can leave a comment in the bottom of this video. Also, make sure to click like and subscribe if you're watching this video on YouTube. That helps other people know uh, about this content. You can share this video as well with those that uh, you, know, you think might find it helpful. And then lastly, if you've yet to join us in my free Affordable Home Recording Tips newsletter, I want to invite you to do that. Simply just click, click the link in the bottom of this description, or if you're watching this on mobile, you can click on the I icon in the upper right of your screen. And once you land on that page, simply drop your email address into the form and click submit. And just as a thank you from me to you for joining us, uh, I'm going to go ahead and send you a free copy of my ebook entitled Understanding Compression in the Home Music Studio. Until next time, this is Dave Maxey with Home Music Studio One.